A few months ago, we tested out PLA supports on a PETG print and PETG supports on a PLA print and got really impressive results. In that video, I mentioned that I would love to run those same types of tests with other materials, and that is exactly what we're going to do today. There are a few different types of flexible filaments, but the most common by far is TPU. Available in various shore harnesses, this is a great material for printing functional parts. Although modern hardware has made flexible filament easier to extrude, printing overhangs and bridging is still no easy task. On top of that, TPU supports with TPU is a great way to form a very messy bond that you're not likely to ever get undone, which does greatly limit the models that you can print with TPU. In today's video, we will be testing out printing TPU with both PLA and PETG supports. I would love for one of them to work as well as our previous test went, but really anything even usable is going to be a major improvement over using TPU supports. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Today's video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay is your one-stop shop for PCB fabrication, 3D printing, and CNC services. Their 3D printing services include everything from FDM, SLA, SLS, and even SLM technologies. I tested out both their nylon SLS as well as aluminum SLM printing and was blown away by the results. For PCB fabrications, they offer both bare and populated boards. They even have a section for open source community projects for quickly sharing designs. Links are in the description below so that you can find out more and check out all that they have to offer. For our test platform, we're using the Snapmaker J1, which is the same printer that we used last time. However, it has been updated to the J1S using an upgrade kit that Snapmaker sent. This is essentially the same printer with the key difference being that there's now a new back panel that's been fitted with an auxiliary fan. This should really help with additional cooling, which is something that the base Snapmaker J1 was a bit lacking in. An IDEX or independent dual extrusion 3D printer is not a requirement, but you will at least need a dual extrusion printer. Using a single nozzle swapping system like an AMS or MMU is going to be very difficult due to the elasticity of TPU. The long purging and retracting that would be needed between each filament swap will greatly increase your chances of getting a clog. The TPU we'll be using is a roll of red Polymaker Polyflex TPU95. Although this was just open from its vacuum seal, I did keep it baking inside of the Ebus Ease Dry the entire time just to avoid any problems with moisture absorption. Given that I haven't printed with any TPU on the Snapmaker J1 previously, I started off with just a couple of test prints. This was easier said than done as I discovered there was no obvious way to adjust extruder tension for softer materials and the speed of the load filament macro could cause a tangle in the filament. The stock tension ended up working all right, but I can definitely see this being problematic for softer TPUs. Moving forward, I printed out a Benchy as well as a test hook. Although they did both complete and the extrusion was fairly consistent, they were both really stringy. My main concerns with the strings was that they would get caught in the PLA and PTG supports, which would have a negative impact on our test results. Because of this, I ran both a temperature tower and a retraction test using the built-in tools found in Orca Slicer. The temperature tower didn't give me much, but I did see that anything cooler than 220 Celsius led to a clog, so I decided to go with 225 Celsius just to play it safe. The retraction test, on the other hand, was super useful, and I bumped the retraction from the default 0.5 to 1.5 millimeters. I felt like the support test puck we used last time was a great model for this, so I stuck with it again and scaled it up 200%. This would be an absolute nightmare to print in TPU due to its vertical overhangs, which makes it perfect for our testing. All the testing was done using the latest Prusa Slicer 2.6 with standard grid supports. No settings were changed other than the top contact Z distance being set to 0.1 detachable. Normally this is set to 0.2, but we want the best possible bottom surfaces, which is the main reason that we're doing this test. With everything said, I ran the test print with TPU three times. The only thing I changed was the support material, which I started using TPU on TPU, then I went to TPU with PLA supports, and finally, TPU with PETG supports. In an attempt to keep temperatures as close as possible, I printed PLA at 220, so on the warmer side, and PETG at 235, so a little bit on the cooler side. For the PETG, I also dried it for about four hours before printing with, just to give it the most optimal conditions possible. I waited for all three prints to complete before trying to separate them. Starting with the TPU on TPU, as expected, these parts were basically welded together. 
Using a thin spatula and some serious prying force, I was able to get a little bit of separation. But looking in between the two pieces, I could see that both sides were being pulled apart and I decided to not go any further. Moving on to the PLA, it also had formed a pretty tight bond with the TPU. This was sort of expected with that 0.1 gap, but as I began pulling at the TPU, I can feel the two halves beginning to separate. Once I got it going, within a minute, the two parts separated and I was left with the cleanest overhang I've ever gotten when printing with TPU. Much like in our previous test, there's a bit of a pattern caused by my support interface layer, but this is not much different than the texture that you'd get from printing with a powder coated bed. Needless to say, I am very stoked with this result. Moving on to the PETG, the bond was even tougher than the PLA supports and I didn't get that same level of release that I got when I was pulling at the TPU and PLA print. But I am pretty stubborn so I once again grabbed the spatula and began prying at the two parts. I was pretty close to giving up when I started to see that I was making some serious progress. With a bit more work I was able to get the two halves separated and I was actually quite surprised with how clean the bottom was for the PETG print just given how difficult it was in comparison to remove these two halves. It's almost as clean as the part printed with the PLA supports and I would argue at a quick glance you probably couldn't tell the difference between the two. With that being said, I definitely would not recommend printing with PETG supports on TPU over PLA unless you really just want an arm workout, I don't see any other potential benefit. PLA on the other hand seems to be a fantastic option. It's low cost, it's easy to print with, and I think the results really speak for themselves. Although dual extrusion 3D printers certainly aren't as common as single extrusion, they have gotten much better and have come down in price over the years, and I anticipate that's only going to continue as we move forward. Do I anticipate I will need to use this very often? No, but I am really happy to know that the possibility does exist, it works very well, and that again, I have this capability when the need does arise. I would call this a successful test and I hope that this will help out some others. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below and also if you have a recommendation for maybe some other materials you would like to see tested like this, let me know because I, I would still, this is a lot of fun. I would like to continue doing this with maybe a couple other materials uh, over the next year here. So on that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do wanna support the channel furthermore, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon where there are some really awesome rewards. Awards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Dana from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.